Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, throughout man's history, there's always been people who always want to tell somebody else what to do. They either like, don't like their lifestyle, jealous of their lifestyle, disapprove of their lifestyle, or whatever. And so all through, since the dawn of time, there have been groups of people, whether they're relig based on religion, based on how they grew up, what they were taught, what they weren't taught, whatever. There's always a, a certain group of society that tries to tell the others what they're doing wrong or what they should be doing, who they should be doing this with or who they should be doing that with and so forth. And certainly this is the case when you when you take the history of the cannabis plant and uh, what led up to it becoming illegal in this country. I mean, our founding fathers, when they first came over, there was a there was sort of a strong puritanical religious uh, faction that tried to run everything, and there were also groups that didn't even believe in God. There were atheist groups and stuff. So, all all of them trying to put their two cents in on on how people should live and all. And I think that's where these early habits developed, and of course they're carried on through time as as the different generations progress, and certainly during the time right up before the marijuana tax act of 1937 there was certainly a lot of this going on and a lot of times if people if they're going to ha stand to lose what they have or something they have is competing with something they see or they're jealous of and stuff a lot of people will make up lies and propaganda to to sort of thwart that to sort of debunk the the what the actual truth is and we certainly saw that well, years before the Marijuana Tax Act passed, we, you know, the likes of William Randolph Hearst with all of his stupid uh, films like Reefer Madness and all the uh, ads they used to run in the paper telling people that, you know, that this was just a public scare and look out and all the blacks were going to be raping the white women. When all the lies didn't work for them for a while, then they turned on the race card and, and said that, you know, this is, uh, this is something the blacks are doing. And every time they've done it, there's been white girls turned up raped and missing. And, and then they went from that to the Mexicans in the Southwest, you know, that were the farm, the sharecroppers and stuff, the ones that were doing all the farm labor when the times got slow after the depression, then they started blaming them. So there's always been these factions that try to, to, uh, make, uh, something of what it isn't and certainly that's what happened with the marijuana tax act with Anslinger and and Mellon and all the people that were in charge at the time and and on up through uh, 1960 when they did the international treaty with Hoover's background uh, Jagger Hoover's background and his support and all they really took it to another level but <clears throat> This is what people have to start look out for in society is when you're told a bunch of lies, I mean, even through the 50s and 60s, there was a very, very strong uh, propaganda movement going that were associating marijuana with communism. And they, you know, they were actually showing films of Chiang Kai-shek and all of the, the Chairman Mao and all of them. And they, you know, they said this, these communist people, they are, you know, you, you, those, those marijuana smokers, they're, they're the root of communism. And, and I mean, they brought in and ever, not just the Chinese, they brought in the Vietnamese, they brought in, I mean, every anybody and everybody that you could be looked down upon by Americans, they blamed it on the cannabis just to instill that f mindset in people. And if you brainwash them long enough, people start to believe it. They really do. And by about the early 60s, right before the uh, International Treaty was passed in 61, there had been an extensive amount of uh, this type of propaganda uh, brainwashing going on. And most of the people at the time, you know, were coming out of uh, the Korean War. The, everybody's always, it seemed like they have this... Uh, they, they need this, uh, you know, this overshadowing power to tell them what to do. And boy, if they're doing what they're being told, you know, everything's good. And boy, I'm being, you know, honest Joe citizen, all that. And, and unfortunately, there were a lot of lies told about the cannabis plant. And when they were trying to get the Controlled Substance Act passed and all, there, there were talks at first. I mean, some of the smarter people that really knew what was going on back then, several judges, several of the people on the, on the Supreme Court and all, they realized that it wasn't a threat and they, and they told people look we we are going to leave this off this should be decriminalized if anything not even put on there at all and just through the powers that be and the way things work you know they they ran a propaganda program strong enough kind of like this prop 19 that just went in california they focused so much on the smoking end of it and really left the whole meat of the pie sitting on the table and of course people you know they when you when you don't throw very much at them they they kind of say well you know maybe that isn't such a good idea but if they'd a whole heard the whole truth you'd seen a whole lot of different results 
And that's certainly what happened when the Controlled Substance Act was packed, passed. And of course, once the government, once they get these types of things passed and they get them set in the mainframe and they get to people believing, oh, your cannabis is bad. And, oh, the people that use that, they're criminals. We've got to go after them. We've got to really put the strong arm of the law and, and round all these people up and lock them up and throw the key away. The, you know, people start to believe in that. And uh, unfortunately, that was no different in the early uh, days of the hippie movement and the late 60s and stuff and the, the war protest, all of that. You know, all of that was being fed into this mind concept about how dangerous cannabis was and all. And, and it was just an attempt for them to justify why they have the Controlled Substance Act and give the law the power to go in there and, and enforce it and all. None of it was true. I mean, they said that if you smoke weed, you know, one joint, two joints, you'd be sterile. You'd never have kids. If you ever smoke marijuana, you'd never finish high school, let alone forget college. And boy, hold down a full-time job or do, be, do anything responsible, you can forget about it. It. This was the kind of propaganda that was going on back in the in the early 70s after they passed the Controlled Substance Act. And this was just another attempt to try to debunk what the actual truth was. They knew cannabis was harmless. The statistics have proven it for the last 45 years that that people just don't die from cannabis like they do from the other drugs like alcohol and cigarettes and prescription drugs. I mean, you know, we it, we, we're, we're as a society, we, we lead back to this, I'm going to tell you what you should do, and, and alcohol is good for you. I mean, look at all of our sports figures. I mean, every commercial, they're, they're you know, toasting a bud or a miller and all. I mean, it's got to be good for you, man. You see you see all these people around that look really cool and all smoking cigarettes, man, that's bound to be, a, you know, but even the tide on that is starting to turn when people start to look at the statistics and see how many people are dying from it. Now, those are actual facts, but they don't bother to chase after those two or even even prescription drugs, doctors pass them out hand over fist like they're going out of style. It's easy to get a prescription. Just go in there and tell them you're, you know, you're depressed, and they'll write you a prescription of any narcotic. Just about you can name it. Tell the doctor, oh well, I had a friend that gave me one of these pills, and it really worked good for me. Oh good, you need a subscription prescription of oxycotton. Well here, let me write that out for you. You do have lower back pain, so I can justify it by doing that. And then people start getting addicted to prescription drugs and and this crutch, and and they don't need these things. You don't even need dangerous uh, substances like alcohol. Cannabis is a safe herb. It's been proven safe. 50 million people smoke it regularly every day in the United States. There's never been anybody in any of that 50 million ever had any problem, never sent to the hospital. It doesn't develop hardcore diseases like the cirrhosis of the liver and lung cancers and, and different things like that. It's actually been shown to be quite beneficial in curing many types of tumors, uh, just, just as in general, as a general, just as a general day-to-day -day preventive maintenance type herb. I mean, it's and that's what it is. It's an herb. And so every time you start to see these lies come out and people trying to debunk the truth of this and that, it pretty much will let you know really what's going on. And that if you look at all of the long list of things that they said that, can that smoking cannabis did to you, and I mean it's a long list, when you look at the actual truth and see what really is, really is the truth, it's, it's always 180 of what they said. You know, they said it want, wants to make you sterile. Well, I personally had, uh, was a father of four children, so it didn't work on me, you know, and, and it just goes on. I'm a college graduate. I've, you know, I've held down many full-time jobs, plus ran my own business for 25 years. I mean, it's just, and that's just me personally. I'm just an average old Joe, and I, I know countless numbers of people I've grown up with, been around all their lives and stuff. They smoked every day just like I did, and they turned out to be good people. They weren't criminals. They didn't go out and do hardcore crime or anything like that. So people wake up. Wake up to these damn lies. I mean, you don't have to look too far into our government today and in the past hundred years to see they're full of crap and they do nothing but lie to the public. So wake up to these lies and call your congressman, get people on the bandwagon, explain to them, you know, this is a safe plan. We shouldn't even be having to have a vote about it. This is something that, that should be allowed. And, and I mean, if you have alcohol in the stores and you have cigarettes at any store you want to go, if you're of age to buy it, by God, cannabis could certainly follow in those, at least the equal ground status of those two, even though it's thousandfold safer. So anytime you can, educate people. That's really what it's going to take. We've got to get people to quit believing these lies, quit believing these brainwashings that have been going on since damn near the day they passed this law, or even years before that, and, and get people educated. And I thank you for joining me on the Cannabis Corner and look for you next week. Bye-bye.